Men of Action podcast, where we bring on stellar men, warrior kings who are above the rest, who guide and nurture others to reach their full potential. And today, I got Matt, who at one point in his life fell at zero until he recognized that hero, that warrior from inside himself, so he can become the best version of himself. He has one of the most remarkable stories you'll ever hear about how he went from victim to victor, how he reclaimed his life, and he's going to share this today. So, Matt, welcome to the pod. Oh, man, Zach, that was quite the hype up, dude. You got me fired up with that one, man. Honored oh, to be here. Go, man. Tell us a little about yourself. Let, let the viewers <laughs> know who is the man, the stud, wearing the nice little red with the gray, got the flying haircut, stud <laughs> on the pot. Uh, so I am I am Matt Call, um, originally from Connecticut, moved up to Massachusetts a few years ago. So I am a Northeast guy, born and raised. Um, Engineer by degree, went to went to the University of Connecticut to be an engineer. And, you know, in terms of some of that, you know, uh, going from from zero, zero to 100, mm-hmm. finding that purpose. Um, I knew that I kind of wanted to be an engineer to some degree, but I was never 100 percent sold on it. OK, so it was always a super driven, driven guy in school. Um but I almost had this like work hard, play hard mentality where because I was doing well, uh, getting getting the good grades, passing the classes, I felt mm-hmm. like on the weekends I could let loose and, and kind of do my thing in terms of partying and and that kind of an atmosphere. So kind of kind of had two halves to to my my puzzle throughout college. And and then after I, I graduated, I got a job up in Mass. So I moved, moved up into Massachusetts and a lot of that lifestyle stayed with me, but I just had a lot more time during the day to do it. Um, you know, it's not like I had classes or homework or exams to get ready for. It was just working the nine to five. And then the mornings were my own, the evenings were my own, the weekends were my own. So I was just like, oh. I got a lot more free time here to kind of do do what I want to do um, and didn't fill that time with positive, positive choices. So there were definitely a lot of negative habits that that were formed and grabbed hold, um, almost kind of like, I guess, filling the void for lack of a, a better term. OK, kind of kind of feel that was it more of like an emptiness or just like a void, just like, you know, something that always sucks in. Yeah, maybe maybe it's because since I I had gotten out of school, now I'm like, oh well, my degree's in engineering. I kind of just got a society tells you, oh, I got to be an engineer for the next forty years. Well, okay. what do I want to do in terms of hobbies, um, in my spare time that's outside of my career uh, right. to to kind of just find that best version of myself. Um, so just didn't really give it much thought. So in a, in a way, it was definitely emptiness and just kind of avoiding the those t- those types of conversations with yourself that anyone needs to have of like, hey, what do I want to do outside of my career, outside of um, what I'm what I'm trying to do from a from a business or um, nine to five standpoint uh, to, to find that balance? So. Oh. So what were some of the things you would do to try to fill that void? What were some of the uh, negative habits that you would do? Pouring a cocktail pretty much as soon as I got home from work. Um, Smoking, smoking weed, watching porn, eating fast food, sleeping on the couch. I mean, it's like they all seem to cascade into one another. Mm -hmm. I think... Both of my jo- both of my jobs, that first one and where I'm at now, um, you know, being an engineer at times is definitely a stressful a stressful career. Some of the decisions I have to make, some of the projects I'm involved in, oh, sure. um, the things that I have to do on a day to day basis definitely are, are, are stressful. Mm-hmm. So I think mainly I was just trying to find a way to turn that switch off outside of work. Okay. Um, and obviously coming from school those habits and the things that I did outside of the classroom was kind of all I had known. So I was like, all right, let me resort to a lot of these similar patterns here on my own. Right. Um, 
so wasn't wasn't really exercising all that much. Um, the eating, the eating nutrition habits weren't great. Sleeping habits weren't great. Obviously, there was the there was the substance abuse and mm -hmm. and addiction side of things. Um, right. So yeah, those were those were probably the the main the main negative things that were that were a part of my life. Well, thanks thanks so far for sharing. I know it's not easy, so just appreciate you being kind of that that honesty, and that's what this podcast is all about. It's about you know, helping men go from who are living lives through an inaction, trying to take action in their lives, who just feel lost. So what was kind of your, I guess, rock bottom, wake up call, honesty call with yourself to say, I'm not happy with my life the way it is, because it doesn't sound like you're too enthused about it. I mean, before the podcast, you know, you just all hype we're talking about and talk about, you know, something like this, and it's just kind of, you can see the the sadness in it and your, in your voice and just some of the, the regrets. For sure. I mean, part of me didn't even want to acknowledge that right. how, what those things were, were having an impact on my, on my health, my um, spirituality, just kind of mm -hmm. the, who I bring to my relationships, the, the, the best self that I can bring to other people. Didn't even want to, didn't even want to face it for a long time. Um, so that's why I just kept okay. doing my thing and really nothing, nothing changed. I mean, I was, I was doing that, um, routine for, for like a year after I got out of school mm -hmm. and then the rock bottom, the first rock bottom moment that, that hit me was I went back to, went back to Yukon one weekend and had just gotten a new car. Mm -hmm. super stoked about it. I was like, all right, this is the first time my friends are going to be able to see it. All that external validation right. comes in and I'm like, oh, great. This, I'm going to be able to show it off to my friends, you know, take them, take them around and, and do stuff. So I go down to Yukon. We, we end up going out to one of the bars on campus, um, get out maybe like 1230 at night. Um, you know, my hesitancy behind leaving the car in the parking lot at the bar, I was like, nope, like I'll just drive home. It's fine. Um, we had waited probably like an hour or so okay. to, you know, like kind of like sober up. Um, yeah. and, and I thought I felt fine, had very limited understanding of, of BAC in terms of drinks and, and stuff right. like that. Um, and how that impacts like your, your body and everything. So I thought I was good to go. I was like, oh yeah, sure. You know, guys, come on, I'll, I'll drive you home. And, and sure enough, right on one of the, the main roads over, over near campus, about three minutes from the apartment that they, that they live at, there was a cop pulling out of a Dunkin' Donuts as I went by him and instantly, instantly put the lights on. I knew oh, it. Wow. He got right behind me. There was nobody else out on the road. Um, so pulled me over had to just answer, answer the questions when he came up to the car. Um, mm -hmm. One thing led to another. He had me out of the car, having me doing a field sobriety test, right. failed the field sobriety test. They put me in handcuffs, put me in the, put me in the car and, and drove me to the, to the police station. Um, this, this was a, a state, a state police station as well. It wasn't the, the campus police. UConn oh. kind of had a mix of, of both. They had a campus police presence okay, and a campus like processing area slash jail, but also there was a state state police um, unit in a town close by that would frequently kind of also hang around the campus and, and near the campus as well. So it was a it was a state trooper. Um, so ended up ended up going to the state police station, got processed. Um, my BAC ended up being around a 0.13. Oh, I'll wow. just give people a reference. Typically, the driving limit is 0.06, and that's the blood alcohol content for those who don't understand that. Right, right. So, you know, I was I was almost double double the legal limit yeah. um, at the time of operating a vehicle. Was uh, the reason I got pulled over was because I was doing um, 40 and a 25, and there was like rain slash the ground was wet. So they were basically saying that I was driving too fast for the conditions is the reason why he pulled me over. Okay. Nice. 
it's not like I was necessarily swerving all over the road or, or stuff like that in terms of maybe some of the things they associate with drinking right. and driving. Um, but just, you know, driving too fast in a posted speed, speed limit zone, um, and, and kind of the conditions on the road were wet. So originally he didn't grab me for drinking and driving, but obviously one thing led to another out on the road that late. And, and that's just kind of how the night turned out. So, right. Yeah, you know, geez, I I uh I was probably got to the jail at like one o'clock, had to get processed, had to have all that done. I called my parents at around two o'clock in the morning. And the first time I called them, they actually didn't even pick up the phone. Oh, sure. So I started freaking out at first because I'm like, oh, well, um, I don't know. Like I had friends with me, but I didn't really want to call them. So I'm like, shoot, like you know, they tell me I only get one phone call. I know. I was going to say that phone. one bad, famous time, that one phone call. Right. I'm like, I'm, I'm staying the night in jail. Like my thoughts are, are going to all these places. Um, so I tell the officer, I'm like, look, they didn't pick up the first time. Like, can I call him again? And he's like, sure. So I end up calling, calling a second time. And luckily my parents pick up the phone. I have that conversation that probably no kid ever wants to have with their parents. Right. Calling them at two in the morning, basically saying, hey, I screwed up. I'm in jail. Can you come pick me up? Because I can't freaking get out without you guys coming to pick me up. That was another stipulation of, you know, since I was over the legal limit to drive, it's obviously like they're not going to let me out of the police station. Right. My car had gotten towed. So I had to go that, get that the next morning. And they actually... um they, when they get you on drinking and driving, a restaurant and driving, they don't let you drive for 24 hours Okay. after, after you, you get arrested. So I had to wait to even go pick up my car until that time had passed. So somebody was going to have to come pick me up, whether it was my friends, family, what have you. Um, right. So obviously, I mean, they did. That was probably... Um, one of the quietest conversations I've ever had with my parents. Cause it's, it's 45 minutes away from where they live. So. Oh my gosh. You know, they picked me up and, and that car ride was, was quiet, but um, you know, the, the, the few words that were said were basically like, just, you know, what are you doing? What were you thinking? Didn't even have an answer for them. Um, just kind of was still just shocked by it was still kind of in disbelief that that, was how my night had ended. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of fallout from that, which, which we can get into. Um, but that was, that was pretty much the, uh, the rock bottom first rock bottom moment for me. That was finally enough of a wake up call in terms of my lifestyle to be like, Hey, like, who do I, who do I want to be as a man going forward? That's wow. Well, Everyone has their wake-up calls and everyone has a different version of rock bottom. And I'm glad that you asked yourself that question of what kind of man do you want to become? So how did you go about discovering the kind of man you wanted to become? Yeah, I think the first thing was just understanding that, that nobody was getting myself out of this situation, but me. Okay. Um, and accepting just where the point I was in, uh, the, the, that actions have consequences, mm -hmm. uh, um, the choices that, that I make day in, day out, um, can, can also have those negative, those, those negative side effects. So that, and then just being able to understand, Hey, just as much as everything I've done to this point has led me here, I can also choose a different path and under, try to understand where I'm coming from, why I'm leaning on certain things the way I am in terms of those substances um, to that extent, because, mm -hmm. you know, you can go out and have a good time and, and yeah. have a drink or two. Of course. But then there's the, like, why was I getting to the point of now having to abuse certain things where I didn't almost have that on off switch of being able to tell myself like, Hey, you've had too much. You need to drive or you need to make sure that you're able to get home. This is something that you just need to be honest with, with myself about and learn from this was, this was a, a learning opportunity. 
for yeah. a while I didn't see it as that. Um, sure. Just like everything leading up to that, I was in denial. Tried to self justify my my actions. Um, even even just resented resented the police officers for a while after that, being like, oh, you know, why were they on the road? You know, um, they shouldn't have pulled me over. Just coming up with all of these just illogical reasons as to how that night turned out the way it did, other than just saying, I made those choices that put me in that situation for those officers to do their job right. and take me off the road because I was not only oh, potentially harmful to myself, but the people that were with me in the car, the other people on the road. Um, it took me a while. There was, um, I had to go to an alcohol education class as a part of, um, the, the court sentencing that I went to. One of the things that I had to do in, in order to work on getting this off of my record was to attend this alcohol education program. So 12 week long program, we met once a week. It was a group of, group of people who, who had gone through. DUIs, OUIs, you know, operating under the influence. Right. It didn't necessarily have to be with alcohol, but a substance in particular. Correct. Um, so went to that class and and there were people in that class that were multi-offense DUI individuals. And the teacher of the class even gave an example of people who were four or five time DUI offenders where the only way that they would still be able to operate a vehicle was if they had to have a breathalyzer put into their car forever like yeah the only way you could turn on your car was if you blew into this device mm -hmm. and it made sure not even that you were below 0.08 which was the leap like that's four four standard drinks right gets you to 0.08 these devices were set to 0.02 BAC. So that's one. Wow. Drink. So yeah. if you blew over that, and I did, I had to have a breathalyzer in my car for six months after this all happened. I had an instance where I blew over a 0.02 and it actually locks you out of your car so that you cannot start your vehicle. And I have to call this company that I rent the device from. Right. And say, Hey, blew into it. I screwed up and they have to reset it from their end and they chart, they find me for blowing oh, over. I never knew that part. I knew all about the, you know, people getting breathalyzers installed in their cars and everything. I didn't. Wow. You had to get a fine too. Jeez. Right. Right. So they charge me for basically having to go unlock it. Um, so, you know, these, these four or five time offenders have this device you have to pay for it to get calibrated every single month. You have to pay if you blow over the 0.02 and for them to unlock it. There is the issue of if you blow over, you can't start your car and get to where you're going. So that completely, you know, I had to Uber home from where I was at. I had to come back the next morning, go to work. I had to basically Uber to my car first, then drive to work. So that whole just getting in your car, starting it, going to where you're going was just like, that had me take a step back and be like, I took this for granted completely. Um, just everything about being able to drive and understanding that driving is a privilege that each one of us has the opportunity to go and get. Like when we're young, we become 16, we can go get our learner's permit. Right. You learn how to drive. You put in those hours with someone who has a license next to you, parent, guardian, friend, you know, whoever you go get your license. Um, and soon after that, you kind of just like forget about it being a privilege about being able to just be on the road and, and yeah. go from point A to point B. So that was just probably the biggest thing for me was um, another, another learning opportunity was just like, Hey, I need to appreciate who, like myself go, going out on the road right. um, and respecting other people that were on the road as well. So just kind of re relearning 
um, road etiquette, I guess, was was a big lesson as well. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it can get so easy thinking, you know, you have all these rights and everything. It's like, well, let's take a step back. And this is a privilege. You can't right. just think yourself. You got to think about other people. So it's a very, it can be a very humbling experience and accepting the responsibility you did. And and if, if it might have taken you some time, it might have taken you some time. Though, the ultimate thing is you got there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a journey, just like you're saying. Yeah. It didn't this was not an overnight right sort of situation you know the the aftermath of that one decision that night ended up changing about probably a year's worth of days after right. after that so um yeah just being able to kind of i just had to very much take a day by day approach um mm -hmm. start stacking the small wins smart um understand everything in regard to the legal process that needed to happen as a result of that what um the court deemed necessary for me to complete um right. and and do in order to to kind of i guess get back to a state of normal normalcy when it came to driving and, and operating a vehicle on the road so i mean i thought the program everything i thought everything i went to was was phenomenal good um, in, in terms of having me be able to take a step back, be honest with myself, take that hundred percent accountability mm -hmm. and start taking those, those little steps to becoming a better, a better person. Um, I, I look back on it with extreme, extreme gratitude, extreme, just appreciation for, for the people that teach those programs, um, you know, the judges and the, and the lawyers and the court system that, that helped me with the case and, and all of that family, friends, just being there, um, for me in, in any capacity, being able to drive me to work. Um, you know, if I needed rides places, rides to the courthouse, wow. you know, my license got suspended for 45 days after, after that. Um, and, but I had court dates in the in that 45 day span back in right. connecticut so you know my brother had to come up multiple times and drive me to the courthouse in in connecticut to go get that done and square that away a couple times um you know ubering to and from work having the that's, ability that's, that's not cheap right right um yeah all in all it probably took took about 10 K when, when all was said. And done. About, I mean, that's pretty much the average you hear about. And what's that kind right. of advertise is about the 10,000. Yeah, man. So it, uh, that took most of my, most of my savings away that I was able to work up getting that first job out of school. Oh, geez. Pretty much went to that. So it, um, yeah. it, it takes a toll financially, um, physically, spiritually time wise just obviously not being able to drive places there it was uh not just not just that rock bottom moment but that like i said that changed everything for for a year really after right. afterwards wow that's probably one of the emotional literally probably one of the top emotional stories that's been on this podcast you know is you just not only hearing it, just like how you speak, but just you can really feel the emotion of when you talk and describe all the events and everything, and all the turmoil that you went through. And I know there's a heck of a lot more. Yeah, man, it's um, there was it didn't even stop there. You know, you kind of you hit rock bottom and you think, oh, that, like I'm gonna start going back up. Right. Exactly. Man, no, in a lot of ways, I probably went even further down. Um, oh, I know you mentioned like your second rock bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of as a result of that, I had to go work two jobs to try and pay off all the things that I was doing. Oh, geez. So I'm working my full-time gig engineering. Then right. I'm going to Under Armour, basically on the side. Um, 
nights, weekends after that, trying to pay back everything, everything that I had to um, put into, put into getting, you know, the, the DUI straightened, straightened out. So doing that, um, but that's where it really started to take a toll on my lifestyle. The drinking at least took a serious adjustment where I was like, all right, I'm not drinking much. Um, fear, fear is a great motivator, um, in a, in a lot of cases. So after that DUI and, and how that all shook out, I was like, all right, kind of opened my eyes to my drinking habits a little bit, but, you know, smoking, playing video games. Um, since I was working two jobs, I wasn't able to meal prep and, and eat a very nutritious lifestyle. So I'm eating McDonald's when I get out of Under Armour at 10 o'clock at night. Oh, before geez. bed. So more processed foods, more fast food, not exercising, sleeping on my couch. Um, not even like my bed's literally 10 feet away in another room, but I choose to sleep on a couch instead. So I remember I was at work. I needed like three to four cups of coffee a day just to basically keep me going through this. And I remember, uh, one of the guys at my engineering job, he, he looked at me when I was getting coffee there in the morning and he, he comes over and he's like, dude, when's the last time you've slept? And I just, I looked yeah, at and him. Other people start to, you know, kind of see what you're going through. Right. Right. And it's not like I advertised what was going on, but it's right, like, no. the fact that he, right. He could physically see something was up with me where like, to the point where I just look exhausted clearly my lifestyle wasn't, wasn't going to be able to sustain itself. But again, didn't want to address that. Didn't want to be honest with myself about that. So just kept letting it do its thing until ultimately God intervened again, just like he intervened that night with the DUI. Mm -hmm. I ended up going to see the doctor um, probably like another, another year or so after the DUI. Okay. year and a couple months maybe um just because something wasn't feeling right um in regard to just like my breathing just felt like it, it was taking a lot more force to kind of um just get through a day okay so i end up going to see the doctor and i'm like hey you know just do a check-in kind of see where i'm at and and i couldn't even be honest with him about the habits that i've that i've talked to you about oh my god about, you know, kind of how frequently I was using stuff, the state of my right. diet and nutrition, how much I was exercising, stuff like that I wasn't even able to, to tell him about. So he basically looked me square in the face and he was just like, how old are you? And at the time I was 25. So okay. I'm like, yep, I'm 25. And he's like, what do you want your next 25 years to look like? Didn't, didn't have an answer. Couldn't, couldn't answer him just shut me up. Like I, I had nothing to say to that. Um, so, and that, that was it. That was, that was rock bottom number two. Um, and that finally got me to the point where like, okay, now all of this lifestyle stuff needs to get addressed. And it gave me the courage to basically say, Hey, you know, I'm going to be 50. Hopefully I can make it to that point. God willing, you know, um, right. I, I get to that point of being able to, to be on this earth for, for 50 years. What type of a state do I want to be in when I get to that point? Mm -hmm. um, so clearly, clearly my lifestyle needed, needed quite an adjustment. Um, so those two moments were the, were the two big ones. I think the DUI happened when I was, um, I want to say 23. Okay. So 23 and 25 um, were, were the two moments for me where that stick out to, to finally being like, all right, got to, got to change and, and become a better version of myself. So that self-development journey began there. Wow. I mean, I don't know what to say, man. This is just powerful. You know, I know there's a lot of guys out there in the same boat. So I'm just in awe of just your honesty and for those who don't know, this is Matt's first podcast, and he's killing it. I mean, he, <laughs> he is. I mean, like, I just, like, I feel in my my heart and my soul. Like, when he talks, I'm just, like, just want to, like, reach over there and be like, man, I'm here for you. Like, just, you just feel <laughs> it. And it's like you're just sitting here just like, 
wow, like you've been through so much. And yeah, some of it was your choice, but we all make poor choices in life. And we all learn from them, which makes it the most empowering thing. If if you can learn from your mistakes, if you can learn what's harming you and taking time to be honest. I know Jordan Pearson says this. Uh, he says, you know, if you really want to know yourself, go stay on your bed and ask yourself, how are you really doing? And it's when you do that, when you really look at that man in the mirror and then you're not happy with yourself, you have a choice to make. You can continue to live the life you want to live, and that's your choice. Or you can take one day at a time and slowly start to put your life back together and not doing it alone. And clearly, thank God, you were seriously were not alone. You had your brother. You had your parents. You had friends. And, 100%, yeah. and even that guy, you know, who just looked at you like, when was the last time you slept? And that's what I love about being a guy. It's like you can be straightforward with somebody. If you have more of that attuneness and you just look at somebody like, look, you look like you haven't slept, you look terrible. Like that's typically like you know, guy code, if you will, for like, yeah, you're right. I'm not okay. I'm horrible. But it's like the next question is, would you listen? Or you say it's my fault, what becomes the next, which is fear. And a lot of times fear is what paralyzes us from moving forward. It can, like you said, it can be a great motivator to improve your life like yeah, i'm gonna be 50 and i don't want to have even worse lungs and barely be able to walk upstairs so right man. right right it's i it's it's something as men in society today we're kind of um we're not supposed to show that we're struggling right um we take we take a lot of pride in basically being able to say that like hey we're good we don't want to show people those that like we're we're not doing okay right um so not only being able to yeah have that honest conversation with myself but then maybe being able to trust like a couple people in my life right to even kind of talk to about that kind of stuff um cuz even though people like my brother my my parents my friends could help me in the aftermath of these things right. it's not like i could really i didn't open up to them ahead of time and say hey like i'm struggling with this part of it was because i didn't want to even accept it myself and i waited for god to intervene mm -hmm. in those moments to be like hey if you keep going down this road it's not going to end well so i'm going to put this thing in your in your path to wake you up from this and and this was right around the time of covid starting too so covid was definitely another pattern interrupt for me that kind of led me down the personal development journey at the same time um so yeah i mean it's uh m we just got to understand as men you can you can reach out to people it's not like you got to broadcast it all over social media you don't have to tell everybody hey like this is what i'm going through Although I know like kind of on, on the Twitter side of things, people do like talking about their struggle and that's great. Right. But for some people, it's just finding those, those couple of people where you can just have that honest conversation with. And, and that's why I try and at least vocalize on the timeline. Hey, if you need that, right. I can be that person um, because of some of the things that I've talked about, some of the experiences that, that I've been through. So if I can be that for someone else, that's just a huge win for me. If yes. I can help someone not get to that rock bottom moment, maybe start to steer them in a better path, recognize where they're going now before they let God intervene, then um, I, I am blessed to, to be able to potentially provide that for someone else. Yeah, and, and kind of taking a quick step back though, I mean, you could be the person God is using you to intervene in someone's life by posting that. So it's not necessary, if anything, be like the consequences of their choices and then seeing how God, you know, responds to that. Right. However that whole system works. Because it's, it's yeah. remarkable that when you really allow God to take control of your life and to help you out when you just cry, like, our strength is feeble. Our strength is weak. And that's why we need each other. And God to really help us through 
very difficulties in, in life and allowing people to come into our lives and not push them away. 100%, man, 100%. And this is a small show voice that says, yeah. hey, you're not happy. Hey, come on, what's going on? Right. I mean, we all we all have that spirit inside of us yeah. where he'll use that to try and make change with yourself. Right. Another way God shows himself is through other people. And, and in bringing that same spirit through others into your life. Um, so that's definitely been one component to, to the faith journey that I've been on. Um, it is one thing I've, I've gotten into after these things have happened. I didn't have much of a, a faith aspect in my life while these were going on. Um, mm -hmm. So just being able to learn about that and, and be curious about how the different ways God works in our lives mm -hmm. has been tremendously beneficial for me. Um, it's almost like once you, once you kind of see how God works and you, you get experience firsthand through people, through the spirit within you, like you can't unsee that. Right. Um, so there, I mean, there's no going back now for, for me. Um, it's just, you know, going forward, how can I, make sure that I'm working on that relationship the best I can, both with myself and God, and then obviously with other people and God as well. Um, yeah. And that's, that's why there's always something special that when people, cause you have people who let's say grew up in church and did the church thing, right. And not questioning any of their spirituality or anything like that, but it's, it's always a little bit different when you hear people who didn't grow up like this in a big church, and they went through so much struggles and pain in their life. And they sometimes come out so spiritual because they found something that they never had. They experienced something that, you know, changed their lives for the better. And it's not just a tradition thing. It's not just going through the motions. It's, it's having that relationship where it's like that you never had before. And like, a lot of times when you develop a relationship, you don't want to lose it. Like you want to cling on to it for as long as you can, because it's like the first time, it's like the first time you ever made a connection with somebody. And we all know it's not easy to make connections with people. And that's why I love Twitter. I, I have to say it's probably like one of the top favorite platforms because not only do people share their struggles, but they showed how they got better. And that they're willing to now take all their pain and struggles and now help other people. It's not like they were star athletes. I know a lot of the people in the fitness injury, I know you're kind of branching into your coaching stuff and that, you know, people who didn't grow up as major athletes, but they found fitness and it helped them. And they want to do what helped them to inspire other people. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It, Twitter's, I mean, I've never had an Instagram. Um, I got rid of my Facebook a while back. I don't okay. have any other social media other than Twitter. So it's not like I can kind of talk and, terms of what the other platforms bring but at least just from what i've seen it's it, twitter has that unique way of like you said kind of people are more vulnerable about their struggles it's not like they're just trying to like post pictures up on a platform and just kind of yeah. say oh look at all the places i'm going to all right. the people that i'm hanging out with um i thought facebook definitely had an aspect to that uh, maybe sure. things like snapchat too um and i mean i'm sure there's probably people on Twitter who use it for that sort of, of uh, a goal. Yeah. And that's, and that's fine. I mean, people right. can use social media, however they want to use social media, but specifically the, the people in this almost like personal development, money, Twitter, you know, finding that next version of yourself, Twitter. Um, they just want to help almost like a past version of themselves and everybody has their unique story, their unique voice, what they went through. And it's so cool being able to see how each person brings that to the timeline. Um, I think anybody yourself included with what, you know, how you put yourself out there and the conversations we've been able to have, you bring your own unique story to the table and how you're able to best help people. I mean, everybody, has just that tweak and their own little um take on on how best to help people so it's really cool just to kind of see that play out on the timeline for sure yeah that's what makes people 
so wonderful and unique is I remember like sometimes going to the sun and some guys like, why does everyone keep talking about the same thing? Like I want something different. And, and I'm just like, my first thought is always, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. What you do is you need to figure out a way where you can tell it differently where it's going to resonate within somebody. So right. like yourself included, I don't know what it's like to have a substance use problem. You're able to make that impact with people who do. I mean, yes, I do work with it, so I understand it from a psychological and uh, really lacking of a spiritual aspect. You know, I can't always get into that part, but um, you have that personal story that's going to bring that special touch of you're going to impact so many people because of that. And I mean, I just like, I know you just wrote a, your first ebook. Yes, sir. Yes, and, sir. Um, it's, on, it's on my list to look at, actually. So I got to guys shoot me a dm of a link for it unless it's uh posted on your um profile yeah you, yeah i can whatever works you know i'll shoot you a dm um yeah. i got a i just got a pdf copy of it i can just send you but yeah okay. for anybody listening who would want to download it you can just go to my profile and right in right at the top there's a there's a link to to get it it's free and i'll, so, and I'll, okay. and I'll save your step it's gonna be in the description below because you know when we bring men on this podcast we support them wholly their accounts, their coaching programs, we support them fully and wholly for free because this whole platform, this whole podcast is to help spread encouraging messages, bring on different people, whether they're coaches, you know, they're a pastor, different you know, religious beliefs, what have you. So that way we can support each other men and just continue to push on action and help each other. And of course, I'm going to support Matt. We, we've known each other for so long now, man. We've had like one connect call prior to this and just, you know, interacting with each other throughout the day. And I just, I got to say, probably the favorite thing I see you do is when you go to the gym. And I just like love how it's like all like lit up in red. And it just, <laughs> I want to go to that gym. I'm not going to lie. Every time I see it, it's like, oh man, I wish I was there. That just looks so clean. It looks so fresh. It looks like a professional, like athletic gym. It just looks amazing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> For, dude, what's crazy, I actually... Just connected with, I don't know, I got to talk to him and meet him at the gym still, but I just, uh, a guy who goes to the same gym ended up finding me on Twitter What? and shot me a DM and he was like, oh dude, like I saw one of your fitness videos and I saw, like, I see you're in, you're in mass, like you go to this gym. And I was like, yeah, like, do you? And he was like, yeah, we got to meet up sometime. So I'm like, um, crazy that. how that are bringing the small and the wide worlds together. Look at that. Yes. Right. Right, dude. So that's that's cool. Um, yeah, the 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 gym vids and pics definitely have a, a unique um, ambiance to them, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I just want to visit. I'm not gonna lie. I just like every time I see you again, like I just want to go there because it looks like so much fun and just like looks so classic. Like I don't I don't know. It's just like oh man, that looks like everyone's like in beast mode at that gym. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, you ever in the Northeast and want to and want to get in a pump, dude, just let me know. We'll we'll hit it up and, and go. Hey, I'm it. trying to travel a bit more. That's something I want to do. I've been working, you know, pretty much nonstop for the last many years, like six years plus at this yeah. point. And I uh, just started kind of relatively traveling. One, it's expensive. But uh, another reason I just kind of want to go out now and kind of explore and see what, well, you know, see the countryside of this beautiful nation that we live in. Yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah. And I mean, you know, try and stay with people. Like I got an extra, I got an extra room. So you ever, you know, you come up, you got somewhere to stay. It's not like you got to, you know, rent an Airbnb or stuff like that. So, um, you know, try and try and leverage those, those relationships and opportunities if you can, for sure. If that's, if that's something you're going to try and do. Well, especially the way you cook. I mean, I've seen some of the videos that you've been cooking and man, putting that salt and pepper to the seasoning. <laughs> For sure, dude. I know that's kind of like my go-to on the elevate calls. I'll just roll up and I'm always freaking cooking something. Um, it's called it Chef Matt. <laughs> yes, sir, dude. I got, I got the, I don't wear the aprons on the, on the calls or anything, but I do, I do have a nice, a nice cooking apron that. Oh, I'll you got to wear that on the call. You got to wear them. Oh, they go. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe, maybe I'll bust it out for one of the calls. I know Payton, Payton's got one. Um, some of the pictures that he, that he puts on Twitter, he, he has it. Um, okay. So I know some of the guys definitely rock the aprons when they, when they cook, I know elevates a big, 
a big cook your own food sort of a group, which it is. is sweet in a, in and of its own self. So yeah, I've definitely um, been experimenting with recipes and my own versus just, you know, making whatever. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's what keeps it fun. You know, you got to spice it up, try something, try new stuff every once in a while, especially as the seasons change, like oh, yeah. being a winner, getting in soups, getting in chilies, getting in oh, yeah. slow cooker, crock pot stuff. Like mm-hmm. I like that more in the winter than summer. It kind of switches up to maybe being smoothies and, and getting stuff in that, getting nutrients in that way. So just kind of adjusting my um, nutrition and diet throughout the year mm-hmm. is, is a cool, cool thing. The one thing I will say you should try is like if you ever make scrambled eggs and you know how you when you beat them and like put some onion powder in there and then you cook then you, when you go to cook it. Oh taste, really? Yeah, you, I, I did. I don't know why I did it one time. Like, I wonder if I put like onion powder in the batter. I like onions. Eggs are pretty good. Put it in. Oh my gosh! Like the flavor just cooks all throughout the eggs and it's delicious. Oh dude, hey man, I'll have to try that out for sure. Yeah, I haven't done it in a minute, but it's it's good. Nice. But nice. just as we kind of, you know, wrap things up, I'm just so glad that you decided to take the path of improvement. I'm glad that you decided, you know, to rediscover God and to really improve your life, to ask yourself those hard questions. And I know that we all reflect on our mistakes, you know, sometimes more than what we like to admit. And then just remind yourself of, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back to that person because I didn't like that person. I want to become you know, the me, the hero in five years, two years, six months, 10 years. And so as we kind of wrap up today, what is kind of a message you like to resonate with someone today? In that aspect of of kind of, you know, not wanting to go back to that person. I think one thing that really keeps me grounded now coming back to the present, um, releasing those feelings of, of guilt and shame of like, you know, well, why didn't I stop sooner? Or, you know, I should have seen the warning signals before God decided to intervene and and Mm -hmm. do these things. You know, I should have been able to change beforehand. Um, And having that guilt and shame come up and almost like drown yourself in that, just like you can drown yourself in in fear. Right. One thing that, that has helped keep me grounded now is, well, everything that has happened on my path has led me to this moment to now be on this podcast with you. So whenever I get too caught up in in the past, the future, kind of who I want to be or who I was, that is, I'll always kind of take the step back, be like, all right, hold on, take a deep breath, say this to myself, like every everything that I've done, everything that's happened has brought me to this exact moment in time. And, and without a doubt, I feel a sense of relief. Those feelings of guilt and shame just take care of themselves. They're not there anymore. It helps bring me closer to God um, by by being in the present moment um, and just thanking thanking him that he he was willing to intervene in those moments. I thank the past version of myself who Ooh. went through those things and decided, had the courage and the compassion with myself to say, hey, let's go down this journey there has to be a better way to navigate through life. Let's see where this can take you just day to day, day in, day out. That's, I know you brought up Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Ed Milet talks about it too with his book, The Power of One More. He talks about his dad having that one more mentality in terms of giving up his alcohol addiction and just being, nice. hey, I can be sober for one more day. Like, let me just try being sober for one more day. And it's just having that day-to-day approach. Um, it, it is not something that happened overnight with me either. It's, it's okay. taken a lot of practice and hard work to, to just take it day in, day out, live in the present and, and be grateful that I have the opportunity to share my message, get on, get on podcasts with guys like yourself and, and try to spread that message the best I can from, from the experiences I've gone through. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. That, that was really well spoken, very beautiful. And I think I do have the book, The Power of One More, and it's on my many, many list of books to to read. So it's a good yeah. one, man. It's a good one. And his podcast too. He he came out with a podcast about oh. like after he released like right as he released that book, 
-hmm. He did a couple, I don't even know what you call it, like live shows. Okay. Um, and the podcast, like they recorded like one of his first, it might've even been the first show of him after he released the book when it was a very, at a very emotional time for him. Um, and holy cow that I know, I know Mitch, Mitch Moore, Matt Moore posted about it in the elevate group and stuff when it had initially come out, I think it was maybe in like the April, May timeframe of last year. Um, man, it, even if you, you know, you're a little ways away from reading the book, at least if you tune into that podcast, you get such a, an emotional side of Ed and he's a pretty emotional guy in his podcast, but that was just at a completely different level. And, um, I really related to it a ton myself. So I encourage, you know, you, anybody else, if, if you can't get your hands on the book, at least maybe go, go try and look up that podcast to listen to it too. Yeah. If you, if you find it, shoot me then DM so I can put in the descriptions here too. So that okay. way people yeah. can. I mean, if it's, if it's that emotional, like connection and to make an impact then all the more, right? So, yep. Yep. Well, definitely, Matt, you are the definition of a man of action who has reclaimed his life and you're only going to go further. And I see you just having a bright future as long as you keep this up, keep that responsibility, accountability, God in your life, man, and anything is possible. And I just see you going, I know you took a risk and doing more coaching. And so obviously if you want his coaching services, I don't know if it's fully up or running yet, but hey, DM him I'll, and all his profiles and everything will be in the description below. Matt, thank you for coming to pod. I hope everyone has a blessed day. See you guys in the next video. Bye.